That was deep. <laughs> so for those who know, that was Buck Break in the movie. I believe it came out. I think you can find it on Amazon. Um, you saw the website also. And I have a, 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 the first, I think the first five series, I think the brother put out, uh, Tariq Neshi. So any thoughts, gentlemen? Do you, Jelly? I mean, Brad? <laughs> I'm ready to throw a garbage can through a pizza. <laughs> 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 oh gosh! Yeah. As deep oh, as man. that is, as deep as that trailer was, and as dark as the topic is, uh, to see Corey Holcomb pop up there—that was a change. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love Corey Holcomb. Corey Holcomb is one of the funniest comedians, man. Um, it's it's hard. It's I think bug breaking take, takes many different forms. It's the sexual or demasculation of the, the black man who's head of the family. It's the uh, providing riches to a select few in the black community, kind of similar to what you were talking about earlier on in the show. Kind of, yeah. hey, if we can uh, push this pile of gold towards you, could you just quiet down the rest of them? Yeah. That kind of vibe. I think it takes yeah. a lot of forms. It's very, and it's something that I've been thinking about for a while now. I think Every time we talk about celebrities and you know they're the news drivers, they're the influencers, they create in this world where people, I think people think the opposite of poor is extremely wealthy. And I disagree. I think the opposite of poor is not being poor. And I think in setting goals, we need to set that as a goal along the way. Let's first not be poor. Because when you're poor, it encompasses all of your energy. How am I going to eat? How am I going to clothe myself? How am I going to take care of my family? Um, what do I do with my time? It's a step above being incarcerated where they tell you everything to do. So when you're poor, and it's not a not talking down to anybody who's suffering from that, your time is not your time. So I think the first goal is to get out of the hole because it's an adjustment to go to Rich, to go to Jay-Z, Kevin Hart, Daniel Kaluuya, Rich. It's an adjustment. That's why so many lottery winners go broke. They don't know how to live. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to adjust. Yep. And I think that's the problem so much. And anything that they can do to to back to the to the trailer, anything they could do to break up that normal quality of life. You don't have to have to have the most money in the world to have a nice quality of life. And I'm not saying limit your goals or your ambitions or your dreams. Our community needs to stop being poor first. Poverty is one of the biggest diseases we're facing. It's affecting almost everything we do. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with garbage men and post office workers and things like that. And you can step up to be more and more and more and more. But let's first let's stop being poor. Right. So when you talk about buck breaking, you're you're directly affecting a family's ability to just exist, to go to work, go to school, come home, spend time with each other, eat together, you know. Um, I used to watch these parents. Mother's home clockwork, 3.30. Father's home clockwork at 5 o'clock. By 6 o'clock, they were eating. You know, it was just this, a regular party life. And they weren't the Rockefellers. They were just regular people, not poor. Mm -hmm. so I think that's the first step. That's the thing I think about with buck breaking. You're, you're, you're directly interrupting the quality of life for so many just regular people. There's nothing wrong with being a regular person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, mm -hmm. but still, definitely. You mentioned when you mentioned poverty. That's you know, I, I believe the definition basically is is just you know, uh, it's relative. Basically, you know, it's resources. You know, one person has more resources than the other. One group has more functional resources than the other. You know, so when you start talking about that, we 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 have to understand well, what what what's what. How do we how do we create that equality? You know, how do we get what the other side has? How do we get closer to parity? You know, and when you start talking about buck breaking, that's like, that's like the, I think that's the, um, almost like the, the first salvo. It's kind of like, listen, you know, you're not going to ever, we're not on parity. Get that out your mind. Um, we'll never be on parity. You're not worthy of parity, you know? Um, so you will always be poor. You will always be beneath, you know? And I think poverty, once you understand it really is a state of mind, you know, um, you think poor, you are poor, you believe that of yourself, you believe that you have less than, so you have less than, you know, the resources that we're talking about are things that we all want. Okay, so, you know, you could be you could be poor in happiness, you could be poor in love, you can be poor in emotional support, you can be poor in a lot of different places, 
you know, spiritually poor, you know. So um, so it's definitely a state of mind. So the first place that they created that poverty was butt breaking. You know, they it was it was like letting us understand that you were never you were you you are beneath me, and I think we just never got past that, and I think that that continues on to this day. You know, every time you see a young man shot in the street by a police officer, you know, uh, for no reason, that's buck breaking. You know, and uh, it's 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 you know, um, every time you see a celebrity who, you know, he he's riding high. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, they, 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 they cut them low. You know, I think that's a form of buck breaking. You know, it's like a psyop, it's a psychological operation, you know, and um, and it's all, I think it's all uh, fruit from the same tree. You know, so you know what? I'm, I'll say this, Derek and, and um, Brad. One of the things that got me, and D explained this thoroughly about this idea of taking a man's manhood, that, that there is something about you that I need to keep under control or break you to the point where you will never see yourself to your full potential because I'm afraid of, of it. Right. I'm intimidated by it. That's why it's the thing about, you know, I had a, a grandmother that was afraid of white people because if you looked at white people in their eye where she came from, it could get you killed. So she didn't like people like uh, Muhammad Ali. She, the way he spoke to white people and stuff like that. She was afraid of that. That's all psychological. That's all there. And so this thing about the emasculation of black men, um, you know, I'm, I'm watching these young men like like the the, the uh, little Nas X and stuff like that walking around in in, in, the, in the way he's presenting himself and things like that. And, and, there, and there's somebody funding that. There's somebody paying for that. There's somebody paying for for you to be this minstrel show and things like that. You know. And much like yourself, uh, D, I was raised around strong men. I was raised around a strong father. I had a strong grandfather and great grandfather and uncles and things like that. And the reality of it is this. It was very, very important the way you carried yourself. And you, to your point, Brad, if that meant that you just wasn't going to be a high level executive, then that's what it meant. The house that I'm sitting in right now was purchased by my grandfather who had a third grade education and he drove a truck. You see what I'm saying? I'm sitting here in the house that he bought with a master's degree. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it was because of what he did and his sacrifice that got me to where I was going. And I was gonna make sure, and I looked at him like he was the president of the United States. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I was just as proud as him. And so the reality of it is this, we've got to learn to hold our position. We've got to learn to keep our position. But I'm, I'm much like Brad to the point, the silver and gold, I, I'm old school. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? To me, it's not worth it. All those things like that. I just know there's there, there's a force that is working against us that is constantly trying to keep us swimming upstream, and that's the that's the reality. And I think what happens is we've got to kind of reset our definition yeah. of success. That's yeah. it. I, that, yeah. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, no. Shout out to Damien for checking in on us. Um, so for me, it's a whole about the breaking of the black family. That whole buck breaking video. Like I think the the agenda that the the that they, they, they push pushing so hard, like you say, little Nas X, and we can go on for a whole bunch of them, destroying the black family. The reason the the whole thing with every movement we had was started with the black family. The story right. of the the pennies that we saved up to put them all the kings in the marches. The pennies that we saved up to help establish these these uh, historical black houses. These certain the back in the day when the now this in churches, Kevin, when the churches used to be more on the front lines helping out and stuff like that. These are from the black family. And that's my thing with the whole the whole buck breaking thing. Like y'all both said, y'all all said it. It's about poverty. It's about economics. But breaking up that family dynamic is so on their agenda. You know why are they so attacking masculinity? No, you they talking about toxic masculinity. No, you, that, that's not us. Like you said before, everything that you have done to us, a white man has done to your women first, and that is so absolutely the truth. So mm -hmm. when you try, they try to say like it's toxic masculinity mm -hmm. and all the other stuff and, and all the things against male. Like, come on, that, it's a whole agenda for, for a reason. And they got so much financial backing, like you said, with the little Nas X. And, and but it is an agenda because let me say something. The way I mean, I started <laughs> hearing in the '90s, uh, metrosexual. I never went to a unisex barbershop and all the stuff like that. Even the clothing started blending together. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I mean, you know, you got to wear the '90s stuff was too baggy. Everything needs to be tight. I'm not wearing tight clothes. It's just I'm just not. It's just, I'm just not doing it. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just not. I don't care who. Nobody's gonna dictate that to me. That's just it. You see what I'm saying? And so what I think is this: two things. If somebody tells you how to feel, then they're gonna tell you how to think. And if they tell you how to think, then they can control you with that. You know what I'm saying? So if something is not funny, I'm not gonna laugh. And that's just the bottom line. And somebody shouldn't tell you I can't eat some food. You tell me it tastes good, and it doesn't. 
I'm just not having it. And that's just the reality of it. Go ahead, Brett. Yeah, but look at that level of confidence. I mean, that's an ideal. That's one of the main things that you get from your family unit. Yeah, right. You oh, get yeah. You get, you're allowed to be yourself, to grow, to make mistakes. Uh, you provided some grace in your mistakes to kind of pick yourself up and learn from them, a support system. So if you attack the family system, you're directly uh, kind of chopping down individual confidence. That's the worst thing. That's the biggest threat to the power structure. Confident people who can't be told to laugh at certain things, who can't be told to wear certain styles. So, so when you take away the father, which makes the mother work extra hard, so now she can't provide all the motherly things because she's being the father too. Whatever scenario it is, now you're raising kids and communities of kids and generations of kids that don't have confidence or security to even try things. The biggest, I think detriment personally, I see with the broken family system. And again, I'll tie it back to the poverty when all of your time and energy is owed to someone else because of your your situation where's your room for creative uh solutions to think about what you want to do with yourself how can you help and give back how can you do extracurricular things how can you feed yourself with art and and and, and you know the soft skills like that how can you do that when all you when all you're doing is thinking about man how can i survive with without a leader and i'll, I'll be honest with you and i hear and I love it when you guys refer to your upbringings. We can't do this by ourselves. So when we get guidance from, man, when I see, I, I can't help but give old black men respect for just making it through. You know, my mother's in her 70s and she talks to me about, yeah, hey, which is normal to, to not go to a white bathroom or what, not drink for what. So to see our elders kind of pass that down to us, look at all the people that are missing that. I give them the utmost credit for just enduring. Like we're getting a taste of it now with insurrections and crazy audits and all that. We're getting a taste of it, but that was their life. You know, they were, all right, you know, they were, if they were, if they were born in the thirties and forties, they Word grew there, up through it. So yeah. it just passed that experience down. And and I, I hear, I hear when Rod says it, when Derek says it, talks about it, about his kid uh, in the service, you didn't provide him the riches or you know this this opulent lifestyle you provided him a life where y'all can sit down and think what can i do with my life where can i kind of apply my talents contribute grow learn like you gave him options that's that's the opposite of poor not yeah. filthy rich right you know what i'm saying wow. so when you start taking when you start cut they would say cut the head off the snake you cut the head off the snake of a family look at the fallout yeah. You see, that's one thing that bothered me with hip hop. And I'm going to say, it. we got to this stage where, you know, one of the first insults was, you don't have this, you don't have that, your car is old, you ain't got the money, let me know when your money grow up, this, that, and the third. And we started doing that. You never heard the temptations get up there and tell the four tops, you ain't got no Cadillac, and I do, and all this stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? It became this competition. And that's why all of a sudden everybody had to get gold. Everybody had to get diamonds. Everybody had to get this. Everybody had to get that. And if I couldn't get it, then I was going to go out and steal it. And this, that, the third. I remember Biggie had the line. This is dedicated to all the people that called the top. For me, when I was out there just trying to sell drugs to feed my daughter, you wasn't about to sell no drugs to get no Similac. You were selling drugs to have that, that affluent lifestyle. <laughs> At the end of the day, we started buying into that. That's what yeah. it was. And the that's right, the right, thing. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm with Brad. The biggest thing, I think, with children is esteem. Dead serious. If you can build a child up with some esteem, then you will know who you are. That is so important that somebody tells you who you are. I mean, my father made me think my last name was royalty or something. Oh, let me tell you something. You're a Walter. You better do this. You better do that. And blah. You know what I'm saying? My name was no better than nobody else's, but he made me believe it was. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's the reality. And then you grow up and you start to develop your own worldview and carry yourself like a man. My father used to, I, I, now that I lost my father, I always think about things, his words and stuff. I remember one time he told me this very, very simply. He said, don't ever let me hear you have a man standing in your face just screaming on you. You either walk away or you whoop his behind, but you don't ever just stand at attention and let somebody just bark on you. You've got to make a decision because you're not a child. And that's the reality of it. And those little things like that, you keep because 
He always said, one day I'm going to leave you. One day your mother's going to leave you. you got to navigate this world by yourself. And that's the mm -hmm. reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Brad, last point before we got to go to break. Last yeah, thing what, two quick points and, and to follow with with Calvin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to follow with Calvin. And I, I spoke about this. I spoke to D about this. Most of the songs brag about how not poor I am. Look how not poor I am. And it's a scar, it's a trauma. And that's that's one point. The second point is in a capitalist society, you need underlings. So why not systemically keep a supply of underlings and poor people and people who need you? That's what keeps rich people rich. Right. So when they say, oh, I don't know, I don't know what systemic racism is or whatever, or classism. You need you need a worker, you need a base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yo, Brad, yeah. you always bring the smoke. You always bring the fire. We got to get you on here more, man. No, we're moving to Wednesdays, Brad, so hopefully it's free up your time some, so we can bring you on Wednesday nights at 9 so we can see if you can. But you always bring the intelligence, man. I don't know why you didn't wear your Clark University wore that Columbia shirt because you, you went to a historical black college with Brad school. But Brad's very educated. Brad got like eight master degrees and shit like that. So just love you <laughs> like that. Right. I'm talking about. I don't want Rod shitting on my degrees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and ironically, the Clark sweatshirt is is not available. Yo, Brian, man, I love you, brother, man. Thanks for the Mother's Day gift again to my mom. This is my brother for real. This is my brother, 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 brother. So I love, love you. Keep it up, man. man. All right, man. And I hope See I don't have soon. to go to White Castle to get a Baysmore cake, man. Peace out, y'all. Peace, bro. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace. 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 peace.